And speaking of monitors and multiple cameras and angles and stuff like that, remember the Fortnite era we had during the pandemic? I miss that era. It's the best era, truly. I think I had a setup on my iPad with a PS4 controller. I had like two TVs side by side. I think we did that once right in the cabana where we put like the TVs on top of each other. It's a good time. What a time to be 21 years old. Yeah, We're at home. The best. We're at home, global pandemic, and then all we can, we have all the time in the world to play video games <laughs> all day. There's, there's like nothing, honestly nothing to look forward to other than video games where like yeah. the world might come to an end, but at least we can yell at each other until 2 a.m. online. That's perfect. Like we're 12 years old. And you made the Yetterns snipe compilation. It's right. true. I did make a snipe compilation. It's a wild thing that, you know, the world almost coming to an end will make you do. Yeah. You almost went pro, I feel like. I only got ever... It's, it's There were a couple shots in there. There was like at least three of the 20 that I put in there were, were like, okay, solid. They were solid. You're getting oh, some messages, man. I am, yeah. Phone is blowing up. Seriously, Trevor, Jacob gets another feature before I even get mine. Who said that? Kakanakis. That's really funny. She wants to be on the pod bad. First female guest. Possibly, yeah, that's right. possibly. It's something that I've tried to make happen before. And what happens? How the, the Trevor Simone show just like falls up short, <laughs> usually in confirming the female guests for some reason they just usually like to bail last minute and then i've given up and then i've just been like hey hey dudes and then they're like yeah i'll show up and so interest yeah what do you think <laughs> how, it's how much worse than it's way worse than dating actually if you're trying to podcast with a girl it's like doesn't happen it just so doesn't happen it's a lot of a lot of it's more of a stretch than i think getting a date honestly i'm being serious at least for me Okay, I believe that. I've been hit with how many the, episodes have you done? If you had to guess, like, are you keeping track? This is number thirty-eight. Okay, so thirty-eight with dudes and straight up dudes. Thirty-eight, nothing like thirty-eight plus more than thirty-eight dudes. I think because <laughs> now that I now that I think about it, because there's been guests with multiple dudes on it, so <laughs> it's impressive. It's yeah, good, yeah, it's a good lineup. Straight up dude podcast. My audience literally is like my you know, quote unquote audience is like 91% male. <laughs> is that what the YouTube analytics that is? What Spotify also says it's like a hundred percent male on Spotify. I would, I would have to guess that Henry Siebert is your number one supporter here. He, I'm pretty sure he's watched almost every single episode from start to finish. So that's, that is, I'm on my way to agency signing. Yeah, fairly. Yes. Leslie inbound contracts they're coming yeah be on this <laughs> podcast maybe that'd be good that'd be good um all right are we, we let's do an intro let's yeah do. well you are you're always big on the intro i i'm i'm keen on the intro i feel like it's hard to get started and into the swing of things until we know who's here wh who you are okay yeah hello anyone who's been listening to me i'm trevor the guy who's been on every single episode and uh and Jacob's the guest this week. So Jacob, tell us a little bit more about, you know, your first appearance and just about yourself in general. Okay. First appearance was at Trevor's parents' house. Uh, Trevor has this like room full of mirrors that he decided that it's kind of like, it's like a mini gym. And he decided that would be the location of our first podcast. So we sat in like a room, like a box with every single wall had mirrors on it. And so I could see myself in, you know, multiple different angles. That was, that was the first podcast. And we had Griffin on as the other guest, the boys that go, you know, we go back to diapers basically. And, uh, now we're here. Yeah, I shouldn't have asked you to recap that because that was just such a <laughs> shitty recap. <laughs> what am I supposed to say with that? We, we talked to, we talk, tell we a story of, for, tell a story, but don't make it so goddamn fucking boring. Okay, man. I'm falling asleep. <laughs> what, am, what was I supposed to say? I don't know. <laughs> but you somehow made it worse than I thought someone could make the story. All right. Well, all right. Well, basically, cool. you were on this show before. Is all you had to fucking say, and I didn't have asked you that. But anyway. Good question. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now tell us about yourself. <laughs> I'm worried to do that now. I don't think it's going to go very well based on how the first answer went. Yeah, because I, 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 you know what? I want to hear more about you than your appearance on the show. So tell 
tell the listener because you are so keen on i usually write a little biography like oh you know jacob is a blah 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 kind of thing okay but yes feel free to go ahead and explain yourself as much as you would like to to the guests like everything like that you need them to know in order to understand right? the, the, i don't need the guests to know or the, the listeners to hear anything or know anything about me my name's jacob 25 known trevor for 23 years probably and yeah that's about it i don't like what what is <laughs> <laughs> provides us with zero information that's specific about you because there's like many people that have known me for that long. An occupation you want to say what I, I mean, like, say like, like you would like to share about yourself other than that you know me obviously that's how you're here sort of one of the biggest supporters man i was at your comedy show last week which you fucking killed um you yeah, don't have to tell me the name of your employer and you're giving your W9. You don't, you don't, you don't want to give w, a little... That's w, for an intro. Yeah. I mean, damn, that was... Okay, I, 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 I work in real estate development in Los Angeles. I live in Beverly Hills. I grew up in Malibu. And I went to school at Cal Berkeley. What's your favorite real estate um, social media personality? Real estate. A person who's on... Uh, on uh, any of those reality shows that's a, that's a good question fuck um or what would your and kind of along the same lines if you could like more of your perfect real estate career and persona like what what would your your whole thing be within uh, you have to be within real estate extremely successful and what would that okay. look like maybe that would be maybe like the the those people online question here like, yeah to take notes maybe uh, you just take inspiration from the really successful people on the okay uh, like uh, like if you had a show about yourself what would I, your what would your what would your stick be your whole thing be as real estate would be, that would that's a good question all right so i have like seven different questions here that i need to answer yeah. uh they're prepared with questions favorite real estate personality like i don't there's a lot of crazy people in real estate. That's okay. They can be a favorite. Yeah. Not bad. Nothing wrong with liking crazies. I, I don't know. Honestly, like my Instagram explore page, just like scrolling through like the different reels and stuff like that will throw up like the, just like some random like real estate agent that's like filming a, a house tour in like the middle of, you know, like just kansas and it's just like it's there's always some really good personalities that are not uh i would say like famous but like if i did choose a famous one i would say like <laughs> i like josh flag he's a pretty funny guy um thinking of that though and that whole like tv series like million dollar listing and stuff like that if i had to assign a character that you most resemble trevor it would uh it, it would be josh altman you should look into him not a it's not a diss but he's i'm gonna look into josh yeah. altman he sure. he reminds me of you like build personality like you guys are similar um and josh flag and josh altman like kind of go at it sometimes it's like they have a little bit of a dynamic it's it's good though um if i had to choose someone to like that i would want to emulate career-wise i would say this guy Gil Dezen, Dezer, whatever his name is, in Miami. He's, <laughs> you want to be I like, know who that is. no, but I just he said Miami, and that makes me think. No, because it's like it's it's like I I don't want to be him, but like if I just t simply answer this question, he's like the funniest looking dude I've ever seen. Like he he legitimately looks like Jabba the Hutt, and, <laughs> and like has like this crazy like goatee and uh, a ponytail. And he just, he like has an Instagram that he pretends is not his. Like it doesn't have his name on it. It doesn't say who he is, but like he posts stuff all about the projects he's doing. And they're all like the most like ridiculous projects. Like he builds like the Bentley tower in Miami and like all these just, I mean, he's got some, his own elevator named after his last name. And it's like an elevator that can bring cars up like, you know 30 flights it's, it's it's interesting what would the point of cars being elevated i mean i get because you're in miami it's like people like want to like have the car in their living room in these like that is true ridiculous I high rises it makes no sense to me but gil dozen desert i'm gonna <laughs> and it's gonna give me so much shit because like I, gil. yeah this guy gil, gil is Dezen. absurd so look into him he's a funny guy um 
what it, does he you said he builds stuff he like develops he builds stuff he yeah he builds he builds like all like the really fancy schmancy like uh is there anything crazy in la that you've seen people build that you're like how do they pull that off or is it not is that is this not a place that you think no, la sucks for building stuff it's like very challenging to do that city works against you not very not very like easy to get crazy stuff past here i'm trying to think oh yeah i mean there's like stuff like nile niami another wait, crazy, wait, like what this guy nile niami he had the uh the one in like beverly hills or wherever in the hills and uh it was sold like out of foreclosure to the owner of fashion nova but basically the guy, he was a really famous spec home builder. He built these really, really large mansions and he kept rolling them into bigger projects. And his biggest one was this like 100,000 square foot like compound that had every single possible like volleyball court, salons, like just, you know, ridiculous, like wellness areas, all this stuff. And it just like successful guy really did some like crazy projects and then he just went off the deep end like he started like trying to push like a crypto scheme like a crypto token for ownership of his homes and then he likes opened some random restaurant in LA that just was like vegan only and then he just it seemed like there was just a series of like weird missteps uh while building his biggest project and he, the compound was his biggest project. The compound was his biggest project. It sold in foreclo foreclosure or like out of foreclosure, whatever the term is. It sold distressed for like a hundred plus million dollars. And this so guy's like the LA vegan Pablo Escobar. Yeah. He said compound. You got to see like he, he, he literally like was at one point very good at what he's doing. And just, it seemed like he like just partied too hard or something. And went off the deep end and it was like projected all throughout his Instagram. And it was like, he had a pretty big following cause he was like a well-known developer. So don't want to be that guy, but it's the publicity that like surrounds some of these bigger people. It's, it's really interesting. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. So I, I can't not stop thinking about Pablo Escobar in he, his, in his fake jail compound. Yes. Oh, I've never actually been there or seen it. I just Pablo seen Escobar's it. fake jail compound. Yeah, when he got a um, <laughs> this is just because solely because you brought up the term compound. Um, Pablo Escobar was like sentenced to jail in Colombia. Like the narco. This was yeah, narcos, yeah. Right? I did watch narco, so I'm an expert on the subject matter. <laughs> he uh, that too. This he went yeah, and, they, and he basically just got to build like some palace that he hung out at that was like fakely supervised. But it was literally just like a thing with him and all his boys that could just like gamble and smoke and have like strippers and shit over there, and exotic animals and what they could do whatever the hell they wanted. They could go and like shoot, you know, BB guns and stuff. Pretty insane. Yeah. Once you get into the, a comp, speaking of a compound next door to the old uh, Star Trek looking house that I used to stay at with my family, that lot is technically a whatever what, what constitute a, a constitutes a compound because we were calling the other like the lot across the street a compound it was just like a big piece of dirt yeah I is that a compound a comp no compounds like a like enclosed no it's just like an overly built like excessively large home like that's, that's my definition that of a compound. build a compound on there yeah i probably I, I believe that that is a big piece of land remember the do you remember the mur murders that happened right Nearby there, no, there were murders. There was one murder. Sorry, singular. A singular. You didn't know murder. about that? No, exactly. No. They didn't give a shit about that in this town because the guy wasn't from Malibu. Are you serious? Yeah. So, but while at the time, the turn of the time I was living there, there was like a a chase, and it wasn't like a cop, like you know, criminal chase. It was a chase, like some dude was chasing another dude, and they ended up driving up on the street that I lived on, and they shot and killed one of the guys, like right before my. Star Trek house. This is like yeah. 2020. 2020. No, no, no. I said this wasn't. This, this is one dude chasing another dude, not oh. cops chasing a criminal. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, no. So it's, yeah, totally like just a dude just randomly got shot on the street. And In front of I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, it's, it's just because like, I don't know if I was there when this was going on. Crazy. Like, 
It's wild. That's really that's. And they didn't find the guy who shot it. He was just, no. free. It's just he just yeah. And they're like, oh yeah, well we're gonna look into it, and you know what that means is they just didn't do shit about it. The guy just got away for shooting someone, killing oh someone on the street. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah, that was um the same street where I had that, that surprise party. You were there yeah. at that. Never forget. Can you tell me your memory of that surprise party? And yes. it was the night of the the power outage. That was power outage. outage. That was that was awesome. So, uh. Trevor, I th- I think your like mom or like sister reached out to me and we're like, this was in the peak of COVID when everyone was social distancing, like people really were really trying to keep it contained and just staying with their families and stuff like that. And you'd see friends, but it would be very cautiously. Um, and your sister reached out to me and a few friends and was like, uh, my dad's going to take Trevor into town to go shopping for a little bit and we're going to, he's going to come back and we're going to surprise him and have cake and eat dinner and stuff like that with him, which was very sweet. Uh, anyways, power on like that part of Malibu and off of PCH and stuff like that goes out completely, which we didn't think would be a problem as we were like approaching your house, going into your house because it was still light out. Um, but the power outage proceeded for what seemed like two, three hours. We, and of course, Trevor, you like were running very late from whatever your shopping experience was with your dad. Like, I guess you went and got exotic uh, yeah, ex- shopping experience, exotic shop, whatever you were doing. You were like at the Nike store. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you were like getting vans. Like, oh, uh, there's a new beer of Converse yeah, that I've worn. <laughs> there's no reason it should thousand take thousand times. Long. Yeah, take it that long. But we sat in your house in pitch black for like, fuck, like literally an hour and a half waiting for you to arrive. Um, and yeah, that was the surprise. We scared you and proceeded to enjoy your birthday in the darkness with like our phone lights and stuff like that. Cause what, what I really liked about that is Dylan accidentally, Dylan, you met Dylan I know Dylan. many times. Shout out Dylan Sean Buck. Sean Buck. Yep. He's yep. back in LA. He's back in LA. For visiting for a couple of days. It's going to be a link up with him. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, get him on the podcast. Would be huge. Shout out, Dylan. Um, he accidentally walked into the house for mine. <laughs> yeah, like fully. I forgot about that. Yeah, Sorry. he fully like walked in the front door and went into the living room of the family. It's like, hey, I'm here for Trevor, and they're like, the fuck is Trevor? <laughs> yeah, and mind you, it was like when everyone was very scared of being like near any strangers because oh of COVID. You're buying your own. You're supposed to go out of your own house into a house that has no power, like no lights. Walks in, right, and then they're like, "Who is who is this kid?" So that was nice to know. That yeah. it was fun. Yeah. Um, and then another thing too was that my uh, parents or sister, whoever was planning told people not to park on the street on PCH so that they wouldn't like see their car and be like, oh. And then lo and behold, Ben parked his G-Wagon of course. on PCH. Of course. And then while we were driving, I was like, what the hell is Ben's no, 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 I'm not kidding. I literally said to myself, oh, look, it's Ben's G-Wagon. <laughs> like, just I saw a G-Wagon. I was like, the only person I knew that had one. I was like, oh. And then like, you should just there in my living room when I get back. Of course. So yeah. Great surprise. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of, you kind I, of didn't, I didn't You didn't connect the dots. You were like I, making fun of it. You're like, of course. Oh, I was like, oh, oh yeah, like yeah. Douche person. <laughs> <laughs> Showing up this car. Yeah. This car's okay. gas guzzling car. Yes. It's absurd. That that's pretty funny. Bring me back. Those days were might sound tone deaf here, but like that era of COVID. It was there was there was definitely some positive experiences. Yeah, in as long as you were as long as you were during offering on a ventilator. Yeah, no, you had a pretty good time. Not, yes, yes, of course. But just that whole, I was, I, I have good memories. Yeah, you didn't to do shit. We just played video games, all that. Video games. There's, I mean, it just it felt like so many, so much Fortnite. A lot of Fortnite. Way of more Fortnite. than was required. I, I can't believe that I was do, we were doing that for like eight hours a day. Like, I, yeah. I don't think I was ripping it. Were you ripping it for eight hours a day? I don't know about eight, but I was thinking we were pulling some four hours. <laughs> yeah, it was like squads. You know, we we were going. We were going. I didn't know how good we had it. I I can't think of it's insane. How fun that was, honestly. But 
It's good. We should run it back sometime. I think I do have a console at home. I was thinking about maybe even Busting getting a new one to play NCAA 25. You're going you're gonna to get NCAA 25? Honestly, I don't think I need to get back into video <laughs> games at this point. No. I, that's what I tell myself. I say, what about oh, tennis, though? Are you good at, are you good at tennis? Are you, are Honestly, let's be real here. A, let's be real here. Are you, are you good? Give us, give me a rundown and all the listeners about how good you think you are and like where you're playing right now against who and how that's going to mm, Yeah. So I self proclaim, I'm self proclaimed good at tennis, but there are haters in the friend group who don't think that I'm not good at tennis. And these haters happen to also lose to me every time we play. But uh, I have been playing a lot more tennis. I feel like it's kind of like the sport that's like it's pickleball ha blew up. Adele blew up and then there's now like people are defaulting back to tennis and recognizing just how good that sport was. So I've been playing it a lot more when you go out on the weekends and stuff like that. Play with Henry, play with Eli. I've tried to play with you Danny. played with or against these people? Against. Singles and or doubles? A little bit of both. A so little you bit of both. one on one, you've played against these people, your haters, one on one. I've you played against them? my haters one on one, beaten a few of them, lost a few. So have you actually beaten I, them? I, 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 yes. For, I, you had to, do I'm going to keep the no. out of it. it. You have one hater, really, really <laughs> big hater, and you've beaten that. Yes <laughs> or no? One hater at least. You I've beaten, officially. 100% beaten a hater. One or on two. one? Or, or two. Maybe one on two. one? One on one, one v one, like with money on the line. Have okay, beaten okay, good. Hater. I just want to make sure. Yes, yes. But I mean, it's such, it's such a fun sport because like I'll go play with like my friend's parents when my friend, when Henry's out of town, I'll play with Henry's parents who are like, you know, 50, 60 and they're just like smoking me and I'm getting smoked. And like, I played with a group of moms last weekend, all of which who were better than me. So maybe I am not that good at tennis, but it's, it's a, it's a fun sport. Yeah. I played against Trent. How did that go? Yeah. I beat him three times in a row. Really? I had Len be the official scorekeeper to make sure that it was, it was everything was in order and I wasn't getting any, there wasn't any inaccuracy. He still would report to people and tell them that he beat me. He's like, hey, you guys should have seen it. I beat Trevor. Maybe it was some crazy thing going on in his mind that he didn't want to accept that. I mean, I think I would beat you too. Do you think so? Yeah. We should take it to the club. I honestly sometime. haven't played and I don't do it. I have zero you, just, that. you have like the athletic. Like... I believe that. Yeah. I honestly believe that if I just went out there and competed against you, I would just beat you. Okay. okay. Henry though. No. He's good. He's he, good. You know what? I'll give him that. Annoying? I'll give him his flowers. He's good I, at yeah. Tennis. Cause like, and I know it translates to pickleball too. Cause we went to central park to play. And did like, he beat you? He's yeah. Absolutely smoked you? No, like, you know, I was I was holding my own, but it was just, you could tell you had the finesse. It's so funny. When you were growing up, who, like, what was the friendly competition against your brother? Like, what, like, did it translate into everything? As an only child, I never had to, like, I didn't have that challenge where I was, like, constantly, like. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Trying to one up. I was brother. stronger than Trent, you know. I was the one. Physically. Physically, you know. Much stronger emotionally as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you? Did no, you guys fight all the time? Like literally, we would obviously like only argue with Taylor, their sister. We'd only argue with her. You, you get physical with Trent, you guys. Yeah, that's how brothers fight. You know. <laughs> um. Yeah, like we were, I'd chase him down the hall and shit, and just tackle him and just pin him down and and just, did, like. Did he, did he play sports? Did he play like a little bit? Yeah. We, we would compete over video games. Um, like I, we would like he would hit a home run in a baseball video game or score a touchdown, and I would like go and kick his ass basically. <laughs> like, in the real life, that, for... like we had always we'd always had the same interests and in ever in terms of everything like sports. Everything was just shared basically as boys two years apart. He was much better at Fortnite than you. I do remember that. That was one thing that yeah, he definitely had over. I'm okay with him being better at video games. He was dirty at Fortnite. He's like, not this that guy, good, this guy was like one of those. He was like doing like all the crazy like builds. Like, yeah, yeah, he was. He was decent. He was just, He's decent. not crazy good. Not crazy. He was good. good okay. You know, I was like right there. <laughs> you were just. You were right. Uh, yeah, but I didn't really try that hard at it though, so like it didn't really matter.
Okay, fair enough. Yeah, but I same thing with tennis too. I didn't try that hard in that game. And I just, you just beat, him. Him. Yeah. beat him. Yeah. Okay. Just like just you call know. out to Trent. So Trent Trevor thinks that he can beat us at tennis still. So I could definitely beat Trent. I for sure beat you. I should do I should. We should play one on one. Let's we play do this that. Weekend. This weekend. We'll do it. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna be in Philly though. Oh yeah. Would you heard about my visit? Not going to Philly this week. No, no. I I said, did you hear about my visit? No. I'm not asking you to go. Um, yeah, I'm going to watch the Eagles Monday Night Football on September 15th against wait September Monday September 16th against the Atlanta Falcons. It's gonna be okay. sick. And I'm going it. to an Eagles. No, no, no. And I'm going to a Phillies baseball game on Sunday against the Mets. It's wow. Monday the 15th. That's yeah. insane. But you get a Are you going to take Henry to any of these? Because you're, you're going to see him, right? I'm not taking him to these games. I'm going to go to dinner with him, though. And get a Philly cheesesteak? Uh, I'm going to get one on s- Sunday before the baseball game, probably, or Monday before the football game. We have to go Where? to Angelo's Pizzeria in Philly. That's the best cheesesteak. What about Wawa? Do they make Wawa is not where I would go as my cheesesteak destination. <laughs> However, I'm pretty sure get getting a coffee from Wawa. Wawa is, I don't think you had any, there's no like West Coast equivalent. And it can't, it's 7 Eleven is not in the same. I got a sandwich that I remember. It was insane. Wawa, yes. Because Wawa has real food. Like you can actually order late night. It's like, I would say it's better than, better, slightly better like than quality on. Than Subway, in terms of it's it's better. It's not like like if Subway. What would you rate like an average Subway in terms of its tastiness and like you know what you're getting? But let's say it's Subway that does its job. I don't what think I rate that at ten. Like a clean Subway. They d- made it and it's like what you know, but it's a the best version of what they make. And it's it's like that's you know it's Subway though. So what is that to you out of ten? I don't think I've had Subway in at least eight years. Like. <laughs> I got I got to be honest here but I would say it used to hit really hard like I had like my my custom order like I would say when in its peak it would be like a, a seven and a half, like eight, maybe. That's pretty ju- an eight for dude, Subway. Dude, I, I used to have like the, I used That's to get really the That's really generous. I'd say seven long. max. I would get like such a good sandwich, I feel like there, and I would be so like, you know, after playing like water polo or going surfing or something like that, eating Subway and like baked Blaze was like, ugh. Baked Blaze? Yeah, I would get baked Blaze. You like baked like, Blaze? And it would, it would, it would, Bake Lays have a weird place. Everything it needed have a to weird be. relationship with those baked chips. They just don't seem. I don't know why. I I, like, I know yeah. like I, there's like a, it's like an option that I would never have selected myself. But when it's presented to me, I'm you're, intrigued. You're not say no, right? Like you're not gonna say no to a bag of baked Lays. So that's what you're given in your bag. Like like if you you know those random sub- subway like on a field trip deals where you get handed the chips at the same time and it comes complain. in. Can't complain when you get like, you can feel bad for yourself, but you can't do anything about it unless, except for trade, if you get sun chips. So, do you like sun chips? No, I do not. Those like. were always like a disappointing. They, those were all, they were too healthy for me. I just, no, they're not healthy at all. They're not even just healthy. like the mid, like a sort of chip option that you just like had to. Would always, I would, I would, again, would take it if it was. Oh, okay. we, you said well, we got off track. I wanted to talk. I want to ask you about your Philly trip. I was excited. You're going, you're getting a yeah, Philly cheesesteak. I'm <laughs> getting a Philly cheesesteak. And then we'll oh, yeah, off. back to Wawa. The rating for Wawa, I would Wawa, give Wawa like a nine in terms of convenience store out of 10 because it, it has that food element to it and it's so consistent. 